In 2023, a large number of the Minecraft community were asking for all free mobs to be added to Minecraft, and weirdly enough, it seems as though Minecraft specifically recognized that by saying this about the penguin. Don't feel too bad for the penguin. Remember our little frog friends didn't win the vote either, but they still managed to hop their way into the game. And this year is an especially important one to mention that because it seems as though the winner might be under fire for not necessarily being legit. There are many reports and proofs of botted voting. There have been exploits in the system that have existed for over a year that Mojang hasn't patched and it seems as though some of those were used to have a fraudulent winner. Let's talk about what actually is happening with the crab and penguin and if a recount will actually determine that one of those has won and what Mojang is going to need to do about it. This is a big one so we'll split this into three parts. What has happened in previous years? What is happening with the mob vote? fraud and what is happening with the crab and penguin because the answer is more interesting than you might expect. But first things first, hello I'm Abyax Toycat. On this channel I cover Minecraft update news but to understand how this news got so wild by itself it's important to give a little bit of pretext as to what happened in previous years because the original mob vote had a clear promise that the losers would never be added which means that they can never actually add any of these free mobs to the game. This was added to increase the stakes of the vote however it did lead to a lot of people being upset because the mob, uh, which won, by the way, the Phantom, won by a very small margin and indeed this means all of the other mobs, which are somewhat popular, will never be added to the game. Which is why in future years they had to backtrack that and so in 2018 Helen Angel, the at the time community manager, said specifically it will not be like last year where one biome gets updated and the rest don't. Instead the vote is just choosing which biome will get updated first but all of those biomes will be updated. And I think everyone's first reaction to that is where is my Savannah update? You said it was coming eventually. That was five years ago now. How is it that we have negative feature additions to the Savannah? Although I guess you could argue the armadillo is now going to come and fix things, but that's a, a whole separate point we're trying to talk about today. But yeah, the idea of the idea library is what they later kind of settled on. Here is the Olraf tweet that specifically says that, yeah, we just bring things uh, back into the idea library to later come back into use. Effectively saying that we're not actually going to add every single feature, but if we ever think it makes sense, we totally Totally will, which is what Vubui was effectively referring to when he said this. Remember our little frog friends didn't win the vote either, but they still managed to up their way into the game. Because despite having seven separate mob votes, with the exception being that first one, which is specifically not coming, none of these second or third places have made it into the game except for the frog, and so it's more of an exception rather than a rule. This is something that makes sense from Mojang's perspective because the only thing they can say for sure about a second or third place mob or biome is that people specifically didn't want it over something that is already in the game, which is a bit of a problem, kind of compounded by something you might have noticed during that second uh, Vubui Frog comment, which is that specifically everyone in the chat while it was going live was saying stop the mob vote. Large numbers of people were saying they weren't going to vote, which is interesting because when the votes came in, it turned out there were more than 5 million of them. This is something that led to a lot of surprise and which is why we need to talk about... Minecraft commits to adding the most popular option to the game and this is something they have done even in past when people said that the mob vote was fraudulent. The most famous example of this was 2020 where of course the glow squid won but it was seen as only being popular because it was being promoted by a very large YouTuber who had a fan base and did something that many wouldn't dream of doing and used it to tell everyone to vote for the glow squid. Whether or not that's the real way the mob vote is won or not isn't really the point. Many people felt a little cheated by this and this is something which is nothing compared to the current year's controversy because this year had the largest number of voters ever. Last year had over 3 million votes while this year had over 5 million and that is despite over 480,000 people saying that they wouldn't vote. And this raises a clear question, were all of those people bluffing and has the Minecraft community genuinely just grown so much that there are that many more votes or does it turn out that comments like this from leakers that we have trusted in the past actually have some truth? Well, let's uh, dive into it a little bit. The first thing is to say that 5 million votes actually is entirely possible. One of the most mind-blowing things about the first mob vote, which was done on Twitter, is that only 6,000 people ended up voting in the end. Seriously, the fandom was decided from a subsample of just a few thousand people who happened to be on Twitter, which means that in election talk, it doesn't exactly have a democratic mandate. It had a turnout of something like 0.001% of the Minecraft community, and although this year is doing better, it still means that 295 million 
million people who purchased Minecraft did not vote in this in some way, which is 59 in every 60 players. A large number of people didn't vote, and so you can't say fraud just based on the numbers, as I've seen some people argue. However, there are multiple reports of people bragging openly about affecting the mob vote, and even more interestingly, Potato Man of MC, who correctly knew some of the mobs before they were actually shared with the public last week, you might recall those correct leaks, says specifically it was rigged through an exploit. The crab was the one that was in the lead until it was rigged by the exploit, and this matches. I did a poll literally 10 minutes before the vote to try and get as close as uh, you know possible to seeing what the results would be, and you can see how the majority of people who at least follow me on Twitter were going to be voting for the crab. This doesn't necessarily mean that, yeah, the results should have been 49% crab. There could be some inaccuracies in that. It could be the potato man has some slightly inaccurate information. I personally am a big believer in the fact that you should ask questions, and that means even when people are starting to refute something and it starts to feel convincing, it's important to see actual proof at the bottom of everything like this, and so that is why these interesting bug reports came in. Uh, this is Web6163, a Mojang web service bug, which was reported uh, to allow you to have a mob vote packet of infinite size, and that might sound like something crazy, uh, but to put it simply, uh, Bogdan, the person who reported and found this, uh, put together some nice diagrams, so the way that you usually vote and the way that the server handles it is you hand over your vote to the server with a token that confirms you are a legit Minecraft user, and that token also confirms that you can only vote once. This is very standard practice in the coding world, uh, but basically you send your vote to the server as to whether you want the crab, the armadillo, and the penguin, and then later, if you send the server your token and ask what you voted for, it should be able to tell you, and this is how the whole mob vote server works, that can say, you voted for the penguin, would you like to switch over? Because all you have to do is alter that packet, but it knows you only have one vote. It's a fairly standard practice, but they have one big flaw, which is that although the server itself, or the Minecraft launcher, won't let you vote for more than one thing, the actual packet that you're sending to the server doesn't have a max length size, which means that you could do something, uh, you know, it's, it's presumably set up for multi-stage voting, uh, Bogdan theorizes, but it means that you could send a vote to the server saying, penguin, crab, 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 and you could vote for as many different options as you wanted, and that is pretty damning. The idea that you could vote an unlimited number of times if you were just willing to alter the code that you're sending off to Mojang, something which Bogdan did confirm actually happened, because uh, when he, uh, you know, he, when he used his same program to ask the data papers what was stored, it would immediately send back the first thing voted for, but if he used a different program, it would tell him that he voted for the penguin, then the crab, 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 etc. And uh, yeah, combine this infinite vote possibility with multiple people confirming that they had, you know, stolen session tokens or uh, managed to create their own, on iOS in particular, uh, you have a lot of vulnerabilities that sound like there's no real way to confirm one person equals one vote. However, for what it's worth, two important things to note. One is we don't know if this was done on a widespread scale, and two is we don't actually know how Microsoft counts this. Even Bogdan admits in his own comment that if you have a bunch of users in the table that look like this, crab, 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 armadillo, and then one person who's voted for penguins three times, uh, not necessarily is Minecraft actually counting all of those votes. If they have a smart system, they could set it up so that no matter how many times you vote, it would just read the first thing in the array. However, what is more likely if they have the lazy coding that would allow you to have uh, so many you know mobs being sent in the same packet, it's possible that they just, you know, effectively do a control F in the database for how many penguins are in there, and then they would count that as the number of penguins, control F for crab, the number of crabs, etc, etc, and then that would be the missing link that would prove that this is actually fraud. However, I think it's really important to mention that although it is likely uh, that they are doing the second option, we don't know for sure because we don't know how it is that Minecraft counts the votes. They might have many anti-fraud mechanisms in place, uh, but they are very secretive about it. In fact, even this bug, which was openly reported for the Ender Dragon Wither vote when they were doing a test before last year, was actually made private two days ago, which implies to me that they're trying to hide the vulnerabilities rather than necessarily fixing them. Again, I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that they just have this weird, goofy programming issue, which isn't a problem because they have a very strong way to solve it. But if they had to hide this issue, to me, it sounds like either they're worried about people abusing it or they're worried about the backlash from people worrying about that. And in either case, it has some concerns about the mob vote. However, I would still say, despite all of the concerning stuff that people have been tweeting over the last few days, it's worth mentioning that even if there is mob vote fraud, and you know, it's likely that there is, like in any uh, democracy, even if there is mob vote fraud, it doesn't confirm that the vote was stolen by that. In the same way that in a regular election, if I cast a fake vote, I don't actually change who the prime minister or president is, right? Because my one vote isn't the big decider. Um, but if tens of thousands 
thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people did, or in the case of the mob vote, a million plus people all conspired to change their votes, or indeed one person voted a million times, then that would be a big problem. However, in that case, it would be so, so easy for Mojang to go through their database entries, check through it, and then confirm what the final results are, which you would have to hope they do, given that Minecraft Live is a non-reversible thing. Maybe that's too much faith to put in Mojang there. I do have to say, if Mojang right now went and checked and discovered it was fraudulent, would they publicly admit that, and would they change the winner? Would they go back and say, oopsie, we made a mistake? Or would they say, you know, no one besides us is ever going to know about this, so therefore we're not going to make this public. It's a big problem, I think, that exists in the world of, uh, you know, stuff like this not being out in the open, is if the public can't see exactly what the methodology is behind the counting, then the public can't say for sure whether the armadillo was loved by 40% of players, and in fact it was a large number of people who just don't vote, or Minecraft China players who are joining the fold right now, or whether it is, you know, like, uh, something a little bit more nefarious. I do have to say, uh, that, it, you know, it's, it's something that is never going to be known about, which is why the mob fraud question is kind of a fun distraction. It's something that people love to talk about as a fun what if, but ultimately we will never know, but there is a key question of trust that Mojang needs to answer. But if they're in the mood for answering questions anyway, maybe they should tell us about... Assuming Mojang sticks by the armadillo as being the mob they want to add to Minecraft, I think it's very important to say that they will of course be adding that into the next update. This is something they've been doing as tradition for a while. It's not technically confirmed and we could be waiting all the way to 1.22, but that now gives us another confirmed feature for Minecraft 1.21. I think it interestingly does fit the theme of combat and tinkering because you can tinker with the scutes to make armor, which would help your wolves be more effective in combat, although, you know, a whole bunch of problems with the armadillo as a whole, but will they be adding the crab and the penguin therefore? Well, I mean the Vu Bui quote specifically says don't worry about the penguin because they added the frogs anyway, and it does feel as though uh, given the, all of the ecological efforts Minecraft is making, uh, having the penguins in the game could be a really great way to encourage a whole new generation uh, to learn about penguins and what it is they're doing. This is something we saw at Minecraft Live, Planet Earth free, but in Minecraft it's coming 2024, I'm actually excited, uh, but that also implies that well, they could teach people about ecological efforts via DLC, no point adding it to the base game. However, something I think that will come out of this, whether or not uh, you know they, they, they know for sure, uh, we don't know for sure about what's going on with the vote, I think that the fact that 30% of people, much more than the number of uh, penguin voters by the way, a very large number of people, 1.5 million, believe that the crab should be added to Minecraft, and off that, the vast majority are not convinced by the cute crab ro roaming around the mangrove swamp, but instead are convinced by the idea of having a further block reach in Minecraft. In fact, the idea uh, for many of those people is not just further block reach uh, for placing blocks, but also for destroying it, and this makes me think, if Mojang is finally adding the auto item crafter, which is such a revolutionary game changer, it's a mechanic you would assume they would never get round to, because it brings Minecraft much more like Factorio in some different ways, if they're going to be bringing this real big game changer, which changes mechanics that have been around forever, maybe they could do the same with block range. I think what is entirely possible is if they find out after doing their audits that the crab got more votes than expected, maybe even as the winner, they could add in the most important part of the crab, which would of course be its crab claw, but instead of it being a crab claw and being an active item, they could make a much better version of it. Imagine, for example, one of the rewards of the brand's new trial chambers being a new enchantment that you could put on your tools, which would allow them to break blocks from further away. Minecraft has worked out, uh, you know, although people care about cute penguins and, you know, crabs and armadillos and whatever else, uh, Minecraft has ultimately worked out what the player base's priorities are on future updates, and I think they know that many people want this extended block reach, and so although the penguin is in this weird um, grey ground of being not li liked by many people compared to the armadillo and the crab, uh, well, the armadillo is in a weird space of not being seen as legitimate by many people, something they perhaps need to fix, I think the crab claw is something that people clearly loved so much that they were willing to vote for this guy over an update to the savannah, and that is a pretty damn compelling point, and uh, yeah, I also I think I want to say one more time before we go here, one of the important things that I like to do is actually dig deeper into evidence and that's why I will not blindly say in this video or any other that the mob vote is stolen just because it feels right to me. It felt like the crab was going to win and uh, you know in the real world we've seen this happen in democracies too. People surround themselves with people they're so similar with uh, that they genuinely cannot believe that so many people would vote for someone else. You know it's going to be 99% of people sharing my opinion and only 1% those bad people not but the truth is 
because in the real world we actually have much more complex opinions and it seems as though lots of other people have differing opinions to you, not because your opinion is wrong, I love the crab claw, I think it's extended reach is actually a very good one, but actually instead because they just like the idea of a new Savannah mob and who can blame them, it seems as though after all that happened, people did vote for the Savannah. And so I guess what you could really say is that my video was the thing that influenced everyone. Why'd we skip Savannah? I would love to ban anyone who voted against the Savannah. It should have been treason to vote without reason. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm looking forward to seeing what Mojang does with Block Reach. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with cute, uh, you know, mobs on the sea. But I'm also looking forward to seeing how they make the armadillo more interesting uh, than just this base idea the community had. Uh, with the glow squid, we thought it would be one of the dullest mobs. It's actually one of the more useful, whereas the sniffer people thought would be one of the more useful, and it's actually one of the less. I would love to see where the sniffer falls on that spectrum, and I look forward to learning with all of you here on this channel, which maybe you can subscribe to. But for now, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.